Calls are mounting for foreign-owned uh, spaza shops to shut down following food safety and quality concerns. Now, recently, communities have seen a surge in incidents of children passing away after allegedly eating snacks bought at shops owned by Pakistanis. One of the incidents happened in our backyard here in the lady in Soweto, where two four-year-old boys died after allegedly consuming biscuits bought at one of the foreign-owned shops. This has left many people with more questions than answers. Bahai to Dumelang, good evening. My name is Tabo Molokwane. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight we zoom in on the concerning issue of food poisoning that has been rocking communities recently. Let's kick start the conversation with the leader of the community of Piri in Soweto, Swangi Lempanza, who is joining us in the studio to give us an in-depth understanding of what is really happening on the ground. On the last week, uh, you know, the community of Piri took to the streets demanding foreign-owned shops uh, shut down. Ms. Bongile, thanks very much uh, for taking the time and joining us the, this evening. Good evening. Thank you, Tabo. Much appreciated. Uh, I, I want us to, you know, start the conversation from the beginning. I mean, you've been on the ground with the families uh, that have seen the deaths of their children from, you know, supposedly food poisoning, as they call it. Firstly, I want to ask you, what is your response, you know, to this outbreak, if I may put it that way, as a community leader and as Umzali? Uh, my take in this is that this is not a, a coincidence. It, uh, it is a, it's an accident that was waiting to happen. Given the histories of the puzzle shops we have around our areas. Mm. The, 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 the state of, uh, how can I say, cleanliness of mm. first when you go into the shop, the first thing you see, you see Hudusi, Dumu, Hudusi Boroto. You know, there's no, there's no order at all. Mm. There is no order. Even the people that are going to serve you, you look at them, you can see these people's hair can tell. Mm. You can see Rumutu Azri meets you. And that person runs the shop and who serve uh, the community of that part because our, 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 um, our area is big. Piri Holy Copan is now one. So if one spaza shop is here, it serves about the, the people who are around. So, so it was an accident waiting to happen. Mm -hmm. This actually for me, uh, now this is where I said enough is enough. I've been looking at this all along and I wanted a, a time where this can be, can be attended to. Firstly, Tabo. You remember we had a uh, listeriosis outbreak. Mm. You remember? Yeah. What happened? Listeriosis. All the products were called back. All, even all those that mm. were bought. Then they said in they were called back. Did you see it? Mm. Everybody was. And everybody was, was. Was you know? Everybody was. Don't eat those things. Ne? And why? Because it affected high-end consumers. Mm -hmm. Every day on social media, you see the, 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 the factories or the, the, these people manufacturing all this food, all the brands that you are used to, they manufacture them. But I've never heard anyone from the relevant departments that are supposed to deal with that uh, following back on the track of where does the food uh, come from, where did it go to. We only hear the part that these people are swear. We don't, if there's no follow up after that. But you know, I'm interested in the issue of why is the community divided on this issue? Because Baba Mbar Rababa the foreign owned shops, because of they are the ones that are assisting us, more community. And then the other community is saying, look, enough is enough. So, how do you navigate that as a community leader like yourself? Uh, we have two kinds of people. And they'll always have, we'll always have two kinds of, even in our families, mm -hmm. we have people who cannot, even if the, the, the decision is right, some people will not follow it. But on this case, uh, these people, mm. because we have, a, a, let's say, the land loss, you find these boys, but you see around, mm. so these boys, they benefit from him. And maybe the land loss also benefit from him. Mm. So he ha already has a, 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 support. a support already. Mm. So you remember uh, uh, the landlords have their friends and their friends. But mm. these, I think those that are against this, 
don't have a lot to, to, to worry about the way we, as people who care about the community, have. Mm. So for them, is mm. So I'm asking them, is it bigger than your child? Does it have to be your child before Obonaure? Uh, uh, these people are not treating us. Number two, these people, uh, given the history of yeah, 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 home affairs, mm. it, 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 it's, a, it's a known fact. Home affairs is, cor is corrupt. So any person holding a asylum or a passport or a visa of any sort in our area is questionable. Mm. So that, that, that leads to a point that even if they were, these people were, 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 were legal or whatever, Rona is our economy. Mm. It is our economy. It's a township in Uko. Whoever brought them there didn't notify us as a, as, as a community. No one respected us enough and said, guys, there are people going to open businesses in your townships. You wake up every morning, there's a spaza shop there, who are you a, 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 a king, what do you call this, container there, mm. container there. Nobody. Now, because we are taking action, we have to call them. We are supposed to act, uh, we, are, uh, uh, we are supposed to be, what you call, I don't know the English word that I can use. But mm. we are supposed to be. They, they comply. So we must comply. Mm. These people. When there's no one, even from the authorities, guys, there are people who come into your, into your community to, and I, I understand the asylum is, 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 uh, is, a, is a paper that gives you a, a refuge yeah. when you are running away from war, whatever the reason, is, mm. is, the reason is. But I don't know of any asylum that gives a person right to operate a business. In the interest of time, because I have to let you go soon, um, I'm, I'm, I mean, now the, the, the matter is under police investigation, we know. Uh, but, uh, I mean, what needs to happen? Are you saying that... Uh, these foreign nationals must go or what is the issue currently now and then also do you think that government is doing enough because you are saying that look they are now just coming because of an incident has happened what needs to happen in your community the community of south africans must take back their economy mm. this is the time this is the time we take back our economy in our townships let these people go because I don't think they are hundred percent uh, legal in whatever they do, even in their documentation, even in the in the operating of of, of shops mm. in our community. So that is questionable because the current the government that we have is known to be like that. So I can't go much into that. But Rona really community appeared today. We had a meeting where the com the, the community signed a petition that. They don't want, uh, not, not the, 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 the mandate, or I, I don't know if I could call the mandate, but the, the reasons of the petition was that before all the relevant uh, officials, government officials have done their jobs in those puzzle shops, your environmental health, mm -hmm. your whatever, all that means, all, 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 all they need and I, according to 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 the, to the regulations of opening a tax shop there is a lot of things that uh, we, we we had a meeting with a, a the lady from the environmental health yeah and according to all the the, the requirements that she said none of these people i've seen access none of them they don't tick the boxes N i speak about one already just one the, the state of the of the of the business, the structure, is hot there. Who do you see when I'm going? Who do you see when you know when you get there? So uh, 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 even while they are still they are busy uh, doing that, we are taking back our economy, mm. and we are not going to allow any foreign person to run and operate a business in our area. It is our decision and agreement as a community that we are taking back what belongs to us. Mam Swangile, thank you for joining us. I wish I could have you for the rest of the show. But uh, thanks for giving us a breakdown of this disturbing issue. I hope that uh, government will accede to your demands and then, uh, you know, you will be able to deal with the issues that are happening in your community. Much appreciated for coming this evening.
Thank you. That was uh, Ms. Wongilem Panza, who is the leader of the community of Piri in Soweto, helping us understand the issue of food poisoning that has been affecting a lot of communities. This story has many legs on it. And, you know, after the ad break, we hear from the Houteng Spaza Shop and Landlord Forum. From now, uh, don't miss anything. Do stay with us. We're coming back after this. Welcome back. You're still tuning in to Soweto Today with myself, Tabo Molokwane. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. If you've just tuned in, before the ad break, we heard from uh, Peri community leaders, Wongi Lempanza, on the recent upsurge of the alleged contaminated food from foreign-owned talk shops, which have brewed cases of deaths among children in the country's townships. Now, just uh, weeks ago, uh, on Tuesday, if I may put it that way, two young girls aged between three and four from Mokwalo in Free State passed away after allegedly eating snacks bought by a spaza shop uh, owner uh, of a foreign national there. Now joining us is uh, Veli Kumalo, who is the chairperson of the Gauteng Spaza Shop and uh, Landlord Forum. He's here to give us uh, the forum's stance on the issue of food poisoning. Uh, Mr. Kumalo, thanks very much for joining us this evening. Uh, welcome to the show. Sibonga. I just want us to start um, by maybe you telling us what Gauteng uh, Spaza Shop and Landlord Forum is and you know just to maybe uh, like uh, what are your objectives okay. as an organization? Gauteng Spaza Shop and Landlord Forum is a forum that is a shop and a stand as a stand we have a client to put on a pant or like hire. Anyone is welcome as long as we run a tax shop. We are the voice of must We are the voice of tax shop owners. So, do you have a database as an organization? Yeah. Uh, how many, many shops? shops do yes, you have? We, yeah, we have, we have a database uh, in Soweto, the whole Soweto. We've got uh, 4,000 tax shops around Soweto. Mm. Yeah. So what qualifies a person, you know, if maybe me nang funu ugvulis e tax shop, then then what happens? Do I need a certificate in order to open a tax shop, or maybe I need some sort of a document? Yeah, it's certificate when we apply. Gune mashala jenga se ushalam ngati chablan se chablan we are a UPC. When we are UPC, we apply a corner. When you register 40, you have a certificate. You have to run in the lab. You must comply. You have to say, 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 but it, it, I mean, it happens that someone uh, was yeah. next door might just decide to go to Namtlanj, because e shop. So what happens to those people that just randomly just decide to go to Namtlanj, because e shop? That's why I said, I said, I said, I'm a tax shop, 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 I'm a few. The most of my clients are going to be a tax shop. That's why I push you to find out comply now. Everyone, most most of our guys are. We go to buy in King of Hell. We go to we go to unga salande langa umtet. So we we send the lunch. We go find out we need a plan before it structure sim. We go make we need a plan. By check because we go to we we are kind of pay na our young office in. Can't take him by my pipe man's lap. Everyone, basically, dollar we manage to send the client. We scan that dollar. We tell him we have a room. In most cases, more more people have room. So we go to our young office. We will report. My inspector, my figure, my child check. Hey man, what kind of window wrong? Kitchen, my pipe. Got to the building. Got to change the ways. But man, the anti democracy is so chinchy. Like so far, not that. We are born. Man, the phone go to school. Me in Galenda. Like we saw, we saw children dying because of. Uh, you know, consuming allegedly uh, food that has been either uh, has caused food poisoning for them because currently now I see as a good to go in the So I want to get a stance from you guys as an Ifora Muguti. When you heard of what happened, 
what was the reaction from the forum itself eh yes phatha kaphlike ungu leyo into leyo ukuthi nazingane eh sezishile mhm wa bona eh eh enalithi sesayi nalithi sa english and eh na no must stand foot na family the weekends again a corner it's a one is no music lava and get this by twisty color cool because now I'm not a cup we are somewhere in a fantasy and we must be seen a see for a fantasy see see land a little land because got this mele is up see may report what what the cause of that you were told I'll get a food poisoning now one food poisoning he learned to let him one of my cake up we are going to totally report a a boy who buy bunny lepi abo as a good government with you on a ill priority government is a team but we let pay abo a man to a gang at totally in utter hotel yeah yeah but send a lot he learned to let him a report yeah utter hotel am right has a little report lena but get the paper am a Like, I mean, the doctor, I mean, one of the uh, interviews, yeah. Engi Bonile, uh, uh, yeah. the doctor was saying that uh, there might be traces of poison. Either yes. um, the, 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 the children maybe uh, either, I mean, got contaminated, their hands got contaminated from somewhere else, or yeah. either it's a poison that's coming from the surroundings, either where they bought Uh, those things so they the, the the information is a bit yeah. inconclusive yeah. at this stage because there hasn't been any proper uh, explanation of what is it food poisoning or just poison poison in general yeah but i just but wanted to uh, yeah. uh, yeah. i5 yeah. only two pack uh, uh, that's yeah. why but passes will to listen the government fanege in kenelele yeah one Yeah. yeah. Just lastly, before I let you go, I mean, you're saying that you represent the spaza shops Shop, uh, and, and uh, landlords and, for, and, and stuff. I, uh, I want to understand then how do you make sure that your clients sell proper food to the people? Because we're seeing instances uh, in townships, Uguti, it's either Ugutla uh, or something like that. How do you deal with your people? Yeah. Kati si ya guma shop uspega guma nyama shop ukuthi nje yabona eh maningi wona yabona kati si asicheka but asanga sayiqeda lo project yabona yasasipendwa ngendlela yabona but manje into engijabulelayo i government i ingenelele eh health ama inspectors health inspectors JMPD yabona seyiqalile i operation into ebangijabulisa angithi uma bayenze operation yabo aba abashi ukuthi bazakuphi This was about seven corn. I understand. You are in a senior lead bank in it. By a check. As I was going to say, by on getting up because Baba Legan is government. But my my school tie. And I'm telling you, so we see the operation is over. It's a Rockville. Obvious thing. So 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 informal about. I'm a client. I understand. But the way by running a corn system, the government in getting it. No more bank bank is the one. But in terms of the issue of food, I'm paratin. Uh, um, right to right ukuthi uye wona lapha uyenze is totally wrong they don't mm. qualify ukuthi uyenze lezo zinto kuna abantu abaqualify inspectors JMPD yibo bafane bayenzela uma operation yabona yeah, mm. ama law enforcement angenelele put i understand very but uh, you know the fact still remains that uh, those people are reactive they only react if something happens yeah. if an incident like that did not happen we wouldn't have seen inspectors yeah. coming in because they never come yeah. to, yeah, to this thing. But, okay. but at, I'm, at, I'm, unfortunately, but we've read a lot of time. Uh, uh, important, but mm. uh, that's why I sit in normal new shop. South yeah. Milan and I see, see oh, uh, NABO, the organization, yeah. the forum with normal new shop because as could we control a much because there are too much spas. And uh, if it's spas, as comply, it's as bully is much again is expired that is pass of funding immediately is valid since i operate low moon to let a tell you license 
Veli Kumala, thanks very much. I'm going to have to uh, let it let you go now. Thanks again for coming in. That's uh, Veli Kumala, who is the chairperson of the Gauteng Spaza Shop and Landlord Forum, uh, talking to us about the forum stance on the sudden spike in food poisoning. He is saying that, look, now inspectors are there, but we know, I mean, they are only re reactive to situations like this. I want us to park it there. We're coming back after this. Welcome back, you're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. My name is Tabo Malukwani. We're almost at the end of the show as we continue to unpack the spike in food poisoning in communities which has claimed the lives of many children. Now joining us to wrap up the conversation is Pemi Campbell, uh, who is the Director for Food Control at the National Department of Health. Uh, Penny, thanks very much for taking the time and joining us this evening. Much appreciated. Good evening, Tavo, and thank you for uh, inviting me, and good evening to all the viewers as well. I, I want us to start the conversation, you know, uh, I mean, children's lives have been lost. Um, talk to us about, um, you know, who in government is responsible for ensuring, you know, that the products uh, gotten from stockists meet the required requirements uh, for being sold from a health and safety perspective. I mean. Now we, we, I mean, we're seeing situations unfolding there and then at the end of the day, we don't know who should be responsible for that. Okay, so yes, our condolences still go out to the parents of the children um, whose lives were lost. And uh, just to say that from government's perspective, we have regulations that we put in place from the National Department under the Minister of Health. And those are regulations for food safety as well as nutritious food as well as labelling so that consumers can know what is in a product. So those regulations are then enforced by local authorities, which the minister authorises, and they are called district municipalities and metro municipalities. So here for Gauteng, we have three metro municipalities, city of Chuane, city of Okurileni and city of Joburg, and then the West Strand district municipality and Sedibeng district municipalities. So we have five of those local authorities in Gauteng and they then are supposed to authorise what we call inspectors under the Act, which are by profession environmental health practitioners who then go out and inspect food premises. So what do they look for from a food safety perspective? There are regulations that we call regulations relating to the hygiene and transport of food. And so any premises that wants to deal with food, whether it's formal or informal, must have what we call a certificate of acceptability that that inspector will issue from the municipality if he finds that those premises comply to the requirements. Ms. Campbell, I want us to you know, just be real about the situation. Uh, you are talking about inspectors from government's perspective, the people that are required or are tasked to make sure that uh, everything, uh, you know, according to the law is enforced. Most of us are from townships and, and I can certainly tell you that we haven't seen any inspectors coming to inspect those shops at, uh, you know, various areas within communities. How do you make sure that work is done or people are just sitting in offices? Okay, so they would be looked after by the city of Joburg, for example, for Soweto area. Yeah. And Soweto, as far as I know, is Region F. So there would be an operational manager responsible for Region F, and he, would he or she would have a team of inspectors that go out and inspect. And each inspector would be given a, a, a certain area to deal with, and then they would be responsible for that entire area. So the best place to find out about your environmental health practitioner is to locate your operational center for Soweto, to find out who exactly is the environmental health practitioner for that area. Mm -hmm. I don't know them on a first name basis. I link up more with the entire director manager to ensure that we communicate on any new legislation or any challenges that they might face. I mean, clearly someone is not doing their jobs because of things are just spiraling out of control. But I want us to move and look at, uh, for instance, if there is a street vendor out there yes. who is not acquainted when it comes to issues of uh, health and safety. How do we make sure as a government 
uh, to make sure that uh, you know there is an initiative to ensure that uh, they are well educated and informed about the food safety and the quality thereof. You know the informal economy and the township economy has been one of the areas that we thought we needed to develop as a country. And when street food vendors first came onto the scene, we initiated a project to try and ensure that local authorities also take on board the need to embrace that second economy and to equip, equip them with the necessary understanding of what the rules and regulations are. So there's been a project, there's also been various research studies that have looked at whether or not food is safe, also whether or not they have the uh, knowledge about uh, how to prepare food. And in 2010, just before the World Cup, the city of Joburg did extensive training because of the venues being in the city of Joburg, as well as to some extent in the city of Ikuruleni and the city of Chuane. And then there was an evaluation of that training that was done on those street food vendors. And about 70 to 80% all knew what they were supposed to do in terms of the five keys to safer food, which is what we call from the World Health Organization, the best practices to ensure that we can have safe food out there. And our regulations are also based on those five keys, which is keeping clean, keep, um, separating raw and cooked, keeping food at safe temperatures, and ensuring that food does not cross-contaminate. Mm. Just lastly, before I let you go, is there a way uh, that community members can report uh, food safety concerns or complaints you know, that they have across communities? I mean, we're seeing a lot of products, it's either they're expired or they're rotten, if I may put it that way. Uh, how can they uh, get in touch with uh, the municipalities, as you said, that uh, you know there are various uh, uh, centres that are actually dealing with that. Yes, usually it's the um, municipality's office. So, for example, wherever you go and pay your electricity and your water, you can get a telephone number from that account, or where you know that the city of of Joburg has satellite offices, you can go in there to find out where could I find an EHP. Or the best thing I often tell people of my age, Dr. Google also helps in terms of finding things. Um, so you could just on your smartphone quickly Google environmental health practitioners for City of Joburg and you could possibly find it there. So that's the easiest way to do it. Um, there are also a number of hotlines that people can report, um, especially the illicit types of, of yeah. products. Um, the Consumer Goods Council has a web page that you can report or you can always check with the manufacturer. They sometimes put their details on a product and you can call them and, and let them know that there are certain products that are not okay. Um, because it's illicit, it's called counterfeiting and it co falls into another piece of legislation we call the Counterfeit Goods Act, which is looked after by uh, police. So because it's something illegal, something criminal, yeah. and they need to investigate. So you could also go to your local police station and open a case in relation to that. Penny Campbell, thanks very much for taking the time and joining us tonight. Much appreciated. Thank you very much, Tabo. Much appreciated. That was uh, Penny Campbell, who is the Director for Food Control at the Department of Health, helping us understand the government's role in ensuring that members of the public are exposed uh, to safe and good quality food. This as the incidents of food poisoning have been on the rise in communities across the country in recent days. Well, that's how we wrap it up for today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you. So please feel free to talk to us about this episode. Send us an email. It's Soweto Today at SowetoTV.co.za. Alternatively, you can call or WhatsApp us. The number is 081-531-8857. For myself, Tabo Mulukwani and the rest of the team, Masi Chaba Kobol is up next with your primetime news. Good evening and thank you for watching.